Okay, what I want to talk about in my 10 minutes this afternoon is motivation. And like Hazel with Peter, I was just a bit worried when Graham started talking there that actually he was um, going to say everything I thought of saying. Um, <laughs> no, I'm never do that. <laughs> um, so how do we motivate uh, students to learn when learning is enormously hard work for them? Now, I think there's an obvious answer to this, and I suspect that's the answer that Penny would have given, that learning should be motivating because what we're asking the student to learn is intrinsically worthwhile, and it's fun, and it's what the student wants to learn. So... Typically, developing infants and toddlers do, in general, find learning fun. They are curious, they're keen to explore, and they delight in every new discovery, even when it's the shape the paint from the tin they've just tipped over is making on the floor. But many learners with uh, PMLD, especially perhaps older learners, don't seem to take the same spontaneous enjoyment in learning as the typically developing toddler. And there are lots of reasons which contribute to this, and as I'm sure you'll hear from every speaker this afternoon, but there's not time to go into that in 10 minutes. Um, so what I want to concentrate on is how we can enthuse learners with PMLD about learning. And I have just three key questions. So key question one is, would I be bothered to learn this? And I think that's the first and most important question. Is what we're trying to teach worth learning? And Hayes has already addressed this in her discussion on curriculum with her Memorable comment about duvets. <laughs> but it bears emphasising again, we need constantly to ask ourselves that question. And at least some things that are intrinsically worth learning would be also intrinsically motivating. And again, Hazel has, has said this, the trouble when you don't prepare together is you all say bits of each other's uh, thing. Communication is a good example here. Learning to communicate one's wants and needs in a way that others can understand is intrinsically motivating because it results in those wants and needs being met. And you can see at the bottom of the slide there are other things which researchers believe are intrinsically motivating. So the second key question is, is it worth the effort? And this is where all those additional disabilities that learners with PMLD have are likely to come into play. And I can think of a number of occasions when learners have surprised me with their willingness to persist at trying to do something that previously I've been pretty unsuccessful in trying to teach them. And just going to illustrate this with a short example from years and years ago, many years ago. I'd taken over a class in January of the year, and all year, right round till Christmas, I'd been trying to teach Graham to hold his head up. And <laughs> Not this Graham, sorry. <laughs> Spelt differently, folks. Spelt differently. <laughs> I'd been you're trying not, to. You're not far off. <laughs> I'd been trying to teach Graham to hold his head up, and when I started, he could he could manage less than half a second, and but by December, he and I had quite a few seconds under the belt, and I was really pretty pleased with our progress. But I organised a trip to see Father Christmas. 
And those who know me will know I don't organise trips to see Father Christmas. <laughs> but the people who we then called dinner ladies were really keen. So I organised it for them, really. <laughs> and that afternoon, in Father Christmas's grotto, Graham held his head up all the time. <laughs> there was just so much to look at. Obviously, what I provided by way of motivation was entirely insufficient reward for the effort he had to put in. So, third key question. How do we find out what will motivate this learner? What do we do when we just don't know where to start? How do we find, it out? How do we find out how to motivate them? And while we must never forget that each person is a unique individual with their own individual preferences, we can't start from scratch with a bag of all the stimuli in the universe. So it's worth asking, do we know anything about how to motivate learners who share some characteristics with this learner in terms of cognitive development, particular impairments, or other things? And we do know some things. For the most part, what we know is about typically developing babies and infants. And we know the order in which the sensory systems develop. And we know some things that very young infants prefer, both auditory and visual. And recently, somebody's actually started asking the really important question, are learners with older learners with PMLD, do they have these same preferences? And here's just some recent research that might be useful to you in working out what your learners might find motivating. And the really important thing to remember, however much we know from research, it may not be what this particular individual finds motivating. So to conclude again, Learning should be motivating because what we're asking the, ch the child or the student to learn is intrinsically worthwhile, it's fun, and it's what the student themselves wants to learn. And if you're thinking to yourself that all of us standing up here this afternoon are, well, quite frankly, a bit old, <laughs> I, I hope that today motivates one or two of you to follow in Penny's footsteps. Thank you.